Good morning or afternoon or even if you're looking at it later, good night. <laughs> but anyway, it's generally the morning and so welcome to our special family service. I'm sure you're going to find it very interesting today because we have got political mouse. Yes. Oh dear. And uh, yeah, very. I know, Mickey. We, we, yes, I know you're going to come as well. So uh, I trust you'll be able to stay with us. And uh, we're going to hear another special story from India. And we're continuing our principles of faith, the greatest thing that God wants to give to us. Everything precious is precious. The Bible says faith is so precious and with it we please God. And most of us want to please God. Um, and of course, how do we please God? We please God by our faith. Faith, it's just such an important thing is faith. Faith believing what God says. And of course, how do we get that? We get that from reading and understanding God's word, the Bible. That's okay, Mickey's coming. He's, he's always, pers yes, Mickey's persistent. Are you per assistant person? In other words, you know, maybe you ask your family or like if you're a ch child, you would ask your parents for something and they say, well, no, not just yet. But do you persist? Do you say, oh, yes, please, please, please. I really would like that. I really would. I really would like to go and buy this special gift uh, for my friend. And uh, I, I need some money to do it. And you kind of persist and persist. And eventually your parents will think, yeah, OK. I'll do it. And uh, but if you hadn't persisted or you hadn't carried on asking, knowing in the goodness of your family, then perhaps you wouldn't have received what you needed. And this is a, a truth that is from the Bible. God wants us not to give up. And of course, that speaks for us who are older as well. Never give up. I mean, uh, sometimes people in their Christian lives, they kind of slow down. They think, I'm getting older. You know, if you watch the programme we do this week on the the older ones, the testimony, there was a lady who actually shared, who was doing, going around the world, telling people about uh, Jesus, starting Christian schools, doing all kinds of things. And in that testimony she shared, you can see it, it's on my timeline on Wednesday night. She said, I'm 73, she says, and I'm raring to go. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So no matter whether we're young or whether we're old, God doesn't want us to give up, to stop believing, to stop serving him as with as much energy and strength he can give to us yes okay he's getting see he's persistent now he's getting yes <laughs> i know mickey i'm talking okay here he is come on then oh hi everybody lovely to see you and uh, god bless you and i hope you're having a good day oh yes what was i going to say now oh i think i've forgotten now yes you wanted so much to say something and then you've forgotten what to say oh yes i know what to say I always tell you this because God doesn't want you to give up. It's like Mike says, and remember, go on then, Mickey. Jesus says, I will never leave you. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll get you back in a few minutes with Fred Pat's love song. That's it, because it is, uh, it is just so important uh, not to give up, to persist. <laughs> it's so funny that. Have you, have you ever done that? you're so desperate to say something even in a conversation with others and everybody's talking and you've got something you want to share and you kind of think oh i want to get a gap in that conversation and i want to speak and then you get the opportunity and you forgot you were going to say well never mind it happens to us all or well, some of us anyway let's have a go into our song and we're going to start off because this is the day that the Lord has made, and it really is. And it's always good to recognize that, that it is the day that God has made. So here it is. And because I've got this, the exercise version, as I call it, it's good just to shake off the cobwebs. Um, yeah, it's an expression we use 
if you kind of do been doing nothing <laughs> or sitting down for a long time he talked about cobwebs shake off the cobwebs because that's when the spiders come along and make cobwebs when you sit and do nothing there's another story about that we'll not do it today this is the day the lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it and as you can see this version is the word rejoice means to spin round and round so are you ready i'm going to stand up as well this morning okay so i'll stand up whoops and i'll lift my screen up like this and i'll put the lights up here so you can see and are you ready are you stand up yes old and young young and old okay here we go this is the day this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made we will rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it this is the day that the lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the day, hey, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Did you do it? Go on. Hey, it's fun. God wants us, yes, he does want us to enjoy ourselves. Um, sometimes we sing this, every single this is the day, second verse, haven't written it down, but it goes, Christ is the way. That's right, following Jesus is the way. So this time we sing, instead of this is the day, Christ is the way, right? Christ is the way, Christ is the way that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in him, and be glad in him. Christ is the way that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Christ is the way, hey! Christ is the way that the Lord hath made. Jesus. <laughs> okay. When we say Christ as well, <coughs> we often use the name Jesus, Jesus Christ. And when we use the word Jesus Christ, Christ means anointed. He is the anointed one. He is the one who God has anointed to be our saviour, to be our friend. Okay. So let's just do one more and then uh, what shall we do? Um, well, we're going to, oh yeah, I got this one out. Because we're doing the life of Daniel, um, let's do this one. Some of you may not know it or uh, maybe it's, it's uh, talking about courage, having courage. Uh, let's come on, Fred. Come on, Fred, you can help us with this one. Okay. Yeah, I really like this one. Hi, everybody. Okay, yes. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Go on then. Um, we'll sing the chorus together and you can do the verse. Okay. Right. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it known. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command. Honour them, the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it known. Many mighty men are lost, daring not to stand. Who for God had been a host, but by joining Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose for and dare to make it known. Many giants, great and tall, stalking through the land, headlong to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. 
dare to have a purpose for man, dare to make it known. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. Okay. That was a good one. So, uh, well, going to do something very special. Oh, very nice. Oh, we had a. We forgot the other verses, Fred. Okay. Uh, all right. Come on. Let's do the last verse. Go on then. We'll do the last verse. We've got to do this one. Hold the gospel. Oh, yeah, we've got to preach the gospel. Tell people about Jesus. That's right. All the gospel banner high on to victory ground. Satan and his host defy and shout for Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm and dare to make it known. Good. Okay. So, we'll do another song in a few minutes. But, uh, like I say, got something different for you this morning. But before we do that, let's just pray to the Lord Jesus and ask him for his help today. Lord, we thank you that you're with us. Lord, we always remember that promise. You will never leave us. And you hold us in your hand. and You'll never let us go. Lord, we worship you and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to help us to understand more about you and, the, and all you've done for us. And to help us have courage and to strength, to stand alone, even to be when other people may not want to follow you, that we will decide, yes, we will follow you because you have done such wonderful things for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, if you looked at the my little advertisement I just put on usually the day before our family service, and I usually just put on about uh, at what time it's on today, and sometimes I do a little poem. And I did a little rhyme about something special that is happening this week, which is our election. Yes, that's right. Very important. It's not happening only in Scotland. It's happening all over the United Kingdom. For the mayors and the different people are voting and choosing on Thursday. Very, very important. It's what keeps us as a nation to give us our freedom rather than being ruled by dictators, which is, uh, it has happened in so many other countries. So it is very important. And to maintain our freedom, to tell people about Jesus, we need to be very careful in the people that we choose to represent us in here in Scotland, in the um, Scottish Parliament, in the, or in the English Parliament, or in the different areas of authority over our land. So it is very important. And as we said, this coming Thursday, there is a special election. I also noticed that as we speak, there's a big election just taking place in India. Um, but uh, And of course, we're doing a story about India in a few minutes. But what I want us to do is to, well, we're going to do, as I said, something different. So I'm going to open my screen again. So hopefully you can see all this. And here, whoops, we'll move from that song to this here. And Whoops, I'm jumping ahead here. Now, here we have a math sum. Yes, it is math. Oh, you thought, oh no, I'm going to switch off. <laughs> no, let's see how good you are. An easy, this is, uh, here's an easy sum. Can we do it? 21 plus 16, what does that equal? 21 plus 16. Again, going back to school for some of us, six and one is seven, two and one is three. So the answer should be 37. And then my computer does something it shouldn't have done. Okay, let's try again. Let's see, it should go there, right? 37, is that right? Is it? Let's go. We can check. You can check on your calculator. And uh, I have to 
do this to find out the right answer. Let's see. I'll have a look. I'll look on the, on the phone, get the calculator up and see. 21 plus 60 equals 37. And we're going to find that that is, is it right or wrong? It's right. Yes, we got it right. Oh, so we nice to get a nice tick. It was always nice. I remember when I was at school to get a nice tick, to get something right. Well, let's do this other one. A bit more difficult. 17 times 5. Well, a 5 times table, when I used to learn it, 12 fives was 60. So one more. Uh, well, that's 5. 12, 5 plus 5 is 60. So I know what it will be. It will be, let's get the answer. See, 60. Five. Uh huh. Is that right? What? R what? Oh, hang on. Let me let me check on my phone. Let me check on the calculator. Let's see. It's uh. Oh no. Oh dear. It's not right. Da 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 da. Oh, it's wrong. It's long. Five or something, five, I want to, oh, what was it? It was supposed to be 85. Yes. So, I got it wrong. Now, unfortunately, I remember when I was at school, I wasn't very good at maths. And often in the school I went to, the teacher would often give us a red tick, big red tick, wrong. And then sometimes we got things wrong, we'd have to go home and you do your homework and you write out your five times table and your seven times table and and <laughs> just to be able to remember. So got it wrong. But can you see what we've done there? Yes. What have we done? In fact, it's 17 times five, which was a sign of multiplication, but also we put here a symbol of a cross yes a cross and when we look at a symbol of a cross it reminds us that we have done things wrong and so what i did here to help us i put here so now i'll show you I can just build it up and it says because the Bible says, I'll just put the second half, whoops, I'll just move that second half of the verse. In the book, of, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible explains that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so when we think about the cross or the cross of the Lord Jesus is what we're really thinking about, it reminds us that all of us have done wrong. Every one of us, all of us have fallen short. There is none good, no, not one. None of us are righteous. None of us can, by our own strength, get it to heaven because we can't do it. And it's when we try to do that, as many people think, then it's almost thinking, saying to God, look, God, you needn't send Jesus to die for us because I can make it myself. And that, is what is also very very wrong so when we think about the cross we think about the fact that we've all done wrong see the cross is a symbol of a fact we've done wrong so let's move on to something else now now many of you hopefully as the lockdown lifts and we can travel again and go and visit friends, maybe go down to the beach. And if you go down to the beach, sometimes we write a letter home to our families or maybe to your gran or, or somebody else, a friend. And maybe you send a postcard or a letter or you write to someone who you like or love and you say to them, you write a letter, how wonderful it is down here on the beach. I'm splashing away. I'm just sunbathing and relaxing after all the work I've been doing. And we put, having a good time, missing you, 
wish you were here, love. And then what do you put next? You just leave it like that? No. Very often, this is what we do. We do that. What's that? What's that? Well, it's a cross, but it's also a sign of a, a kiss. Yes, it's a sign of affection. It's a sign of love. Yes, that's right. A sign of love. And so we, we put a cross. And if we really love a person a lot, we'll maybe do three crosses. <laughs> Just like that. To show that we love somebody. And the cross here is a sign of love. Yes, that we love. And uh, so we can see, and again, when we're thinking about the cross as a symbol, it's a sign, that cross of Jesus. It's an incredible, wonderful sign of God's love. And I'll just show you this a bit more. I wrote it down so we can see. And here's the most famous verse in the Bible where it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God, we sometimes say, and you put your name there, if your name's Samuel or your name's Keris or, or Karen or, or Joe, or Ed, whatever you, you put your name there, Caleb, right? For God so loved Gordon that he gave his only begotten son that if Samantha, Sally, believes in him, then Mike should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why, as we told you earlier, it's so important to believe, so important just to trust and believe in the Lord Jesus, because he gives to us and we have it now. Everlasting life, eternal life. It's not just a length of time life. It's a quality of life that gives us hope and joy and peace. So these are two examples of how the cross one is used to show we've all done wrong. The cross also shows us God's love. And now here's why I was thinking about this little example we're doing just now is because, as I said, this week is election day. And on Thursday, many of us will be going into what we call polling booths and there will be election candidates. And I've just written some ones here, I've given them all kind of fruity names, if you like. And uh, here we have, and I'll just mention some of the different parties that are here. Uh, for the younger ones, you obviously you'll not be doing this. But for those who are 16 now, it's gone down from 18 to 16. So those who are 16 and older will be able to vote to, for, to put somebody in the Scottish Parliament here in Scotland. And so I've put these candidates. These are some of the candidates. I've got Michael Apple. Now, these are not the ones who are on the ballot paper, the names, but the parties are. So we have Michael Apple and SMP. You know what SMP stands for? That stands for the S Scottish National Party. And I've got somebody here called Brian Banana. Mickey likes him. And he is the conservative con. You see, con doesn't mean for somebody who teach you, which is perhaps unfortunate, but it is the Conservative Party, the Conservative, or sometimes called the Tory Party. Then I've got another one here, Colin Coxwain. He is, Cox is on, anyway, he is the lab, lab, that doesn't mean somebody who works in the lab all day. He is uh, an abbreviation for the Labour Party, the Labour Party. And then we've got Deirdre here, Deirdre Damson. Uh, she's the Greens, that's Lisa Fruit. And, and the Greens, now that means that they are particularly concerned about the environment because of the Greens. But they have views on other things as well. Um, so that is the Greens, but you've got to check. And all these people, you have to check what they actually do believe. Is it what you agree with? Now, I've got another person here. Now, the 
there are what they call the main five parties, but then there's a whole list of other ones. There's so many I haven't listed them, but I've just listed three, which are quite interesting. And there's Edna Elderberry. Now, SFP, what does that stand for? You've probably not seen that, but you'll see that as you go to the polling booth. This represents the Scottish Family Party, which is a new party, uh, more or less, this year, which represents family, or they say they represent family values, the importance of family. And that's what they believe in. And they believe in, for instance, they believe very much they don't believe in abortion, which most of the other parties do. And um, so that's the Scottish Family Party. And then there's another one. This is a new party too. Frederick Fijoa. I'm not sure if you say that name like that. It's actually a fruit. But uh, that's the Alpha Party. Now, that's a man called Alex Salmon who started that party because he's had a bit of a disagreement with um, the SNP leader, Nicola Sturgeon. So he feels he should start his own party. And then there's others I've just mentioned. One of them here, like Graham Grape, the Alliance Party. OK, so I say there's many others. Now, what you have to do when you go to a polling booth, you go and you have to choose just one candidate on the list. Well, there's two lists on each list. You choose one candidate. And then what you have to do and to show I'm trying not to be biased or influential as for who you to vote, though I, there are ones I would like you to vote and others I'd like you not to vote for, but that's an opinion which we all have. So what you will do when you go to the polling booth is you put a cross. That's right. Like that. So you do a cross and against one of the names of these people who you would put a cross against. I wonder who you would put a cross against. Yes, I can hear some of you saying different things. Yeah, but like I say, because I'm in a program like this, we're not political. But at the same time, I would suggest that you look at the values that these people have. Do they stand for? And I always, as a Christian, of course, we look for values that um, represent what we personally believe. And that's important. Now, you see, so you have a cross, but why do we put a cross? Well, the cross is, is here, represents, shall we say, choice. Let's see, it represents that we are, whoops, let's do it in capitals, choice. See, we are choosing, we are choosing who we want to represent us. Now in the Bible, and I'm using, I'll show you this verse here from the Bible, which has disappeared because I did have it there. It says these words, whoops. Uh, I'll, I'll write it out for you. It says, choose, whoops. Choose you this day who you will serve. Oh, in fact, I think it is here. Let me just check. There it is. Yes, I did have it. There it is. Let me just blow that up for you. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Oh, here we are. Oops. There we go. Choose you this day, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. And this is Joshua speaking to the people of Israel. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So when we think about the cross, it's important for us to 
recognize it is a sign of choice. We put a cross as a sign of we are going to choose that person. So when we think about the cross of the Lord Jesus, we have to come to the place where who we are going to choose. Are we going to choose to follow him? Are we going to choose to give our lives to him, make him the person who we want to be our leader, the one we are going to follow, or are we just not going to choose him at all? As that piece in the Bible we're just looking at there, what happened with the Israelites, that's sadly a lot of them chose to follow other gods and turn away from God. And God told them what would happen if you choose me, you will be blessed, you will be prosperous. When the people chose that, it was absolutely fine. But when they decided not to choose to follow God, then yes, literally disaster happened. And we can read all about that in the Bible. So there we have our, uh, our three crosses, the cross of choice, the cross of recognizing God's love for us, and the cross realizing that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the standard God wants. Okay, so as I said, I did that just uh, because this week, as we said, it's very important and people are praying. I know there's many prayer meetings where we are praying that God will bring his right choice. And in most of the parties, there are people who love the Lord Jesus representing all these different parties. So I hope you will pray too, and because uh, that's going to take place on Saturday. Okay, so let's do our mission story about in from India. Uh, we've just this is the last one of three stories. This is how the story there. Remember, we did the story of Shanti of Premier, and this morning we're going to look at this story of Ramji. I think that's maybe how you say his name. Here we are, this is Ramji, and he was born uh, in a very, very poor family in a village uh, in India. And in India there, the, like we say, the village was very poor and he didn't, then family couldn't afford him to go to school and things. And so what Ramji did as he was growing up, he used to go out with the cows, look after the cows and feed the cows. And that's how we spent most of the day. But one day as he was going uh, with the cows, just coming back a little bit different way, he noticed there was a, a building and he asked one of the young people, he says, what's this? What are you doing? Oh, they says, this is a school. This is a this is actually a Christian school. And they teach us to read and to write. Oh, and it's really good. And Ramji thought, I would love to learn to read and write. I really would. And he, and he says, it's, it's, it's not very expensive, they said, because it was obviously the missionaries were helping to support it because they wanted the children to learn to read and to get to know God. So he went home to his dad and he says, Dad, can I go along? I would love to learn to read and write and go to, there's a school which has just started. Can I do that? And his father was so angry with him. He says, no, of course you can't do that. Your job is to look after the cows and we've got to do that so we can get our food. No, you can't. Well, Ramji was persistent and he kept on asking and asking. Though his dad got a bit upset with him about doing it, he never gave up. I just told you about being persistent. So he, he kept on asking and asking and his dad said, no, no, no. And then one day he says, yes. And she was surprised. He went, what? <laughs> but, he says, only on the condition that you can get somebody to look after the cows. Oh. Oh, dear. And Ramji thought, so he went back to feeding the cows. And he thought, oh, is there somebody? And then he managed to find a co his cousin, one of his cousins. He had, and he says, uh, Dad. I've, uh, I've got uh, a cousin and he's going to do it. All right, then, his dad says, you can go to the school. So Ramji went to the school and he began to learn 
to read and to write. Something that, of course, we can take for granted in, in our country. And he learned to read and write. And then he used to have a chapel in the school. And then he began to hear about the Lord Jesus. He began to hear the fact that what we've shared today, that all of us have sinned and done wrong. And he recognised that we've all sinned, broken God's laws. And then he recognised that God loved us. God sent his son from heaven to die for us, to take the punishment we deserve for the things we've done wrong. And he was just so thrilled that Ramji, he decided, he made the choice. And I hope that's the choice that you have made. Like we say, whether we're young or whether we're old, have you made that? It's such an important choice to choose Jesus. And he chose Jesus to be his saviour, to come be his personal friend, to forgive him for all he'd done wrong. And he was so excited about that. Well, the teacher says, look, Ramji, it's uh, it can be difficult because your religion is very different to the, the religion your parents have is very different to what we believe and they might not like it. Well, Ramji didn't really listen. And he went home and he told his mum and dad he'd become a Christian. They were so angry with him. In fact, as you can see here, it was very sad actually. His dad slapped him. You are not going to that, that school again. And they stopped him from coming to school. And it was really, really sad for Ramji. But Ramji now had learned he'd got a weapon. Yes, he had. He had learned how to pray. So he began to pray that God would make it possible. And when he was doing with the cows and everything, he saw the children going to school, some of his friends. He says, please, will you pray for me that God will let me, that my father will let me come back to the school again? We'll pray for you, Ramji. We'll pray. We pray. We believe in God with you. So he, he prayed and he kept them asking. And one day, before, I think we thought, OK, I know my dad likes a nice cup of tea. So he went, he made him a nice cup of tea. He did everything he knew his dad liked. And then very graciously, he says, Dad, is it possible? I would love to learn. And it's so important to learn to read and write. And his dad says, OK. Whoa, he was so excited. Well, he went back to school and because he worked very hard, he used to give him prizes for working hard and getting things. And one of the prizes was a beautiful Bible. He was so excited to get a Bible. Again, the teacher says, look, Ramji, be very, very careful. Your parents will not like you reading the Bible and uh, it could, you could get into quite a bit of trouble. Yes, well, I mean, actually, I must say, it's, uh, you think, of course, that can happen in India when, of course, they worship other religions. But, you know, I heard this week, and it's very sad, actually, of a man who was simply speaking about the Bible. This was in London, and he was just telling people about Jesus. There weren't many crowds. He wasn't blocking anywhere. He was just simply like many people have done for years and years and years, just standing up and telling people about Jesus. Some would want to listen, some don't, and that's fine. But somebody complained. And the police came. Oh, it was very, very sad. And this man who was 71 years old, he got hold of man. This happened last week. And they took him, they arrested him, they put him in prison simply for telling people about Jesus. Now that happened here in the United Kingdom. Because sometimes now we see that sometimes people don't like to hear about Jesus or even some of the things that the Bible says. Why? Because the Bible shows us that we've done wrong and people don't like to hear that they've done wrong. Jesus says this. He says, when I come, I explain to the people that they have done wrong. And because of that, they don't like me. But it's so important. We need before we can go to heaven, before we can be saved from our sin, we need to acknowledge that we have sinned. And one of the things that people this is right from the time of the garden of eden remember when adam and eve they they sinned do you remember the story how they took of the forbidden fruit and then god came into the garden 
to look for Adam. And of course, because they had sinned, they knew they'd done wrong. Their conscience was affected. They went and they tried to hide. And remember, God came to Adam because obviously you can't hide from God. But God was wanting Adam to come. But when he didn't, God came to Adam and said, Adam, what have you done? You know what Adam did? He did not want to admit his sin. He didn't. What did he do? Do you remember the story? He blamed Eve. What did Eve do? She didn't say, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, she didn't. She blamed the serpent. And that's how often we can be. We don't like to be caught doing wrong. You know, I tell the story of a child, you know, the, of, um, in the home. And there was this tin of cookies or biscuits. And oh, I really liked them. And it was just, wow, I thought. And he thought, mm, I'll just take one because I'm hungry. He took one and he took another. And before long, he'd eaten the biscuits, or well, some of them. And his mum came in and says, where's those biscuits? Did you take those biscuits? Uh, I quickly said, oh no, the, oh, what happened? It was terrible, mum. The dog came in and the dog nicked them all over and, and began to eat them. Because he didn't want to admit that it was wrong. And we're all like that. Well, <clears throat> that was the situation for Ramji. He, so his family says, be very careful. You don't let them see you reading the Bible. Well, he loved the Bible so much. Every day he used to get his Bible out and he used to read a passage and he got excited about the, some of the stories that we're going to do, like the stories of Daniel, the lion's den and, and Joshua and Samson and all these amazing stories. And of course, the stories about Jesus. And he got so, one day though, he got caught, so caught up in it that he got late for school. And his dad came looking for him and found him reading his Bible. Well, once again, his dad was furious with him. And he says, and he took hold of the Bible and he got some kerosene, which is like some fuel, petrol, and he poured it on the Bible and he burnt it. That's it. And so he was stopped from going to school. Well, then not long after that, his father says, right, Ramji, you're going to go away and stay with your gran. So they sent Ramji away on an ox cart to with his gran. Now, Ramji, though, had learned sufficient of the Bible. He knew the Bible. He had hidden his heart. The Bible, you know, the Bible teaches us that we are to remember God's word, hide it in our heart so that when we're in trouble, we can remember the stories. And the stories that Jesus told. And that's what he used to do. He just used to remember. And he kept praying and believing God. Even though he was there with his gran and his gran. She was okay. Um, so she didn't really mind him. Um, praying and things. Well one day as he was praying. He was asking the Lord for his help. Because one of the things he wanted to do. He thought would it be possible for me to go to a Bible school. Well, one day he was out helping up the animals. He heard somebody whistling and he was whistling a Christian song. Now, I'm afraid I can't whistle very Can you whistle? I can't whistle very good. It was. I'm trying to whistle. Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so. He recognized the song because he'd heard it at the school. He looked up and there was this young man and he was going along and he was holding a Bible and he was whistling this song. And he says, excuse me, excuse me. Y yes, son, what is it? Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? He says, well, well, well I'm a Christian and I, and I love the Lord Jesus. Oh, really? Who are you? And so Ramji told him, told him about his dad and told him about what had happened. Well, the man says, I'm actually a Christian missionary. I've come here to the town to, uh, we're establishing a school and we're helping people get to know about God. Would you like to come? Ramji was so thrilled because this was God answering his prayer. So he went and he attended again that school. And as he grew up, as he learned more about God's word, this desire to tell others about Jesus came more and more into into his life and so god made a way for him to go to bible college where he learned there 
about the Lord Jesus from the Bible and then what he did as he grew up. He went back to his own village and he began to tell the people there about the Lord Jesus. Because he never gave up, he persisted and God answered his prayer and God helped him to do what he wanted to do. So that's again a true story. Those stories there are from India and I hope uh, you will never give up serving Jesus, which is so important. Well, just before we go and find out what's happening with Daniel, let's have one more song. And well, uh, we've got, what shall we do? Let's see. We've got Be Bold, Be Strong, S for Sin. I've got this one up. Father Abraham, the only thing is Father Abraham is a great song, but it's a long song. So maybe I think having done that story about Ramji, we ought to do be bold, be strong for the Lord your God is with you. Come on, Fred, let's do this one. Fred loves this one. OK, are you ready? Yeah. Hi. OK, I like that story. Yeah, I know. It's a true story. I think I'd like to go to India and tell people about Jesus. Well, you never know. You never know. Uh, that could always work out. We must pray for India at the moment because they've got some very great problems because of the pandemic. And uh, it's very, very sad what's happening there. Yeah, yeah, I know it really is very sad. OK, let's do a song then. Be bold, be strong. OK, the content Fred. Be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. Be bold, be bold. Be strong, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. I am not afraid, no, 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 I am not dismayed, not me, for I'm walking in faith and victory. The man and walk in faith and victory, for the Lord thy God is with you. Be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. Be bold, be bold, be strong, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. I am not afraid, no, 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 I am not dismayed, not me, for I'm walking in faith and victory. Come on and walk in faith and victory, for the Lord thy God is with you. <laughs> yes, he is. Okay, so let's go now into our Bible story. And as we're going to be here, and we're hearing the story about Daniel. And we've been going through the life of Daniel, how his uh, the courage that he had, and his three friends. And last week, whoops, let's go back where we are to... Remember last week we heard about the king's dream that Daniel was able to interpret. Remember that? Which was just amazing. Uh, amazing story that. So let's go. Whoops. Uh -huh. There we are. Remember the statue? We learned about the interpretation of the dream and God showed Daniel the picture of the dream the king had and also the meaning of the dream which led to the fact that all these kingdoms were going to rule the world the kingdom of babylon persia greece rome and then eventually there was this stone which hit this picture of the uh, statue and that showed you how jesus is going to come back very soon now this is one of the most famous stories in the Bible of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Now, here we go, sometimes people say. And of course, that they weren't the original names. It was uh, used to be Michelle, Azariah, and Hananiah. Of course, Michelle was from the name of Michael, really, who is like God. But of course, the Babylonians changed their name to try and get them away from God. But just because the names were changed, that did not stop them following the one who they served, which is the true God. And so as they 
were being blessed because they were rulers now in the land of Babylon. But sadly, that some of the other people in Babylon, because they served the true God, they other people did not like it because they wanted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego now to follow the gods of Babylon. So they thought of a plan. And this plan happened when the king, because the king was quite a proud man and he'd been winning wars and battles and so he'd become very wealthy. So he made a statue, what's it, 90 foot high? How many is that in meters? It was incredibly high, like the size of uh, a big building. It was really, really high again, very with gold and everything. It was very, very impressive. So the king had this statue and he said, at the dedication, that everybody was to come down and acknowledge him and to bow down before this God that he had created. So, all the people were told at the dedication when the sound of the music and the harp and the, and the instruments played, the pipes, like the bagpipes even, they were all there. And when they blew the trumpets, they played the harp, and they did all the different kinds of music, everyone was to bow down and literally worship because that's what happens when people bow down they are worshiping the idol the image which of course the bible says you're not to worship any other god apart from him now shadrach meshach abednego knew it was wrong to do that and there would be lots of other people who would want, want to do that too but it had been told by the king that who ever did not bow before this statue would be cast into a fiery furnace which of course caused most people to actually bow down before the statue but of course Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego because they loved the true and the living God they refused to bow down before this statue well there were those people who, as we said, who did not like the king um, favouring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, which he had done. And it was probably, as we know later on with the story of Daniel and the lion's den, maybe they had encouraged the king to do this in the first place. So immediately that Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had failed to do what the king had commanded, they immediately became... They became snitches. That's what we call people today who go and tell tales. And they went and they snitched on these three friends of Daniel. Oh, the king couldn't be. What? What? They're not doing that? That's, that's terrible. So the king called Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And he says to them, is this true? Now, come on. And he tries to get them to persuade their mind. And so he says, look, King, we are not, you're not going to make us change our mind. We have decided we follow the true and the living God. We do not bow down before statues. The king was getting more and more furious. Who can resist my God? And he got more and more angry, he said, the Bible says, that his face was more, you know, furious when he gets really, really angry. And he said, he's very, very angry. But Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they says, look, our God is able and he will deliver us. Now, what they did, which is very important, they declared the word of God. Because the Bible has said, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you go through the fire, you will not be burned. That's a passage in the book of Isaiah. So they knew from God's word that God could and that he would deliver them. And but then they said, but if not, we are still not going to do what you say. So they knew that God could and would heal them. But if in God's purpose, it was for the fact that they were to be martyrs, they were to, to die, then that was OK as well. 
Well, the king became so, as we said, so angry. And what he did was he called for the furnaces to be made seven times hotter than what they were. And so the, king, the, the, the Shadrach, Meshach, Medigo refused to bow down. So they got hold of the um, of them to throw them into the fiery furnace. Now the fire, as I told you, the furnace had been actually um, heated seven times hotter. And this picture is probably not a good picture because you see there the guards throwing them into the fire, but because the flames were so hot, the actual guards were actually killed themselves. And it says that the uh, three just fell down into the furnace but then people were watching the king was watching and others were watching and then as they watched they could see in the furnace there was four people and four people were walking about inside of the furnace and the king says look look he was he was what's going on what's going on and he says one is like the son of God. And so they waited a while and then the king shouted, come out, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And when they came out, the bands were untied, but there was no smell of any fire upon them and they came out. It was like the Lord didn't actually come out with them, the angel of the Lord, which had been there in the fiery furnace was not there they but the king had seen him and he recognized the courage that these men had been willing to stand for the true god they had not given in to pressure they had made a stand and they had chosen chosen to follow jesus or follow, sorry chosen to follow the lord whether for good or whether for ill no matter what and, you know, God can ask you and I to do that. When we're a Christian, it's wonderful, it's exciting, there's tremendous things. But sometimes it is tough. As we said there in the story of Ramaji today, it can be difficult, especially when people don't believe in God. Or sometimes it's hard at school when we can be mocked if we're a Christian. But it, we can be all called to make a stand. And... Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego made a stand and then the king, he gave them all kinds of rewards and honoured them and he respected the fact that they had stood against him for the truth and uh, that's really what happened and they were celebrated and they were honoured and one day the Bible speaks about yes, even here, sometimes people can be rewarded for standing for what is right and, and, and the truth. And uh, we can just see that blessing. But the Bible talks about everything is rewarded. And the Lord Jesus, he sees. And he says, if we make a stand for him in that day when he comes, he is going to bless. He is going to reward. And for those who are faithful and to enter into his joy, which he has prepared. But as we said, today it's choosing. And come back to this verse as we finish today, Joshua 24, verse 15. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what Joshua said. And at that point, the Israelites says they would. So as we do at the close of our family service each week, we usually just ask you the question, are you serving the Lord? Whether we're young or whether we're old, are we putting him first in our life? Are we, are we keeping to be persistent? Are we keeping, yes, I'm going to serve you, Lord. Maybe there's somebody here you're just looking in and maybe you're not even a Christian. A Christian is a person who has asked the Lord Jesus. As we said earlier with the example of the election, the, we've all done wrong. We've broken the laws. We've maybe disobeyed our parents. We've maybe told lies, been jealous, angry. All these things from God's law, the commandments. 
And all of us have broken one or more of them. So we've all sinned. But then, because God's incredible love, he sent Jesus to take the punishment. His punishment for the things we've done wrong. And he died on that cross to show us his incredible love. Remember on the cross, Jesus prayed and says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. And that forgiveness is offered to you and I, even today, if we're willing to receive it. But that's where we come to this. It's a choice. Choose. Will you choose the Lord Jesus? Choose to receive him into your life and choose to follow him. And so what we'll do, just as we finish today, we're just going to pray. And if you'd like to choose Jesus or even rededicate yourself to him and ask him to help you just to stand for him. Again, just to pray this prayer with us. So let's pray now. Say it. If you'd like to repeat it with us, that'd be great. But it's always good to speak it out loud. And simply to say, Lord Jesus. I recognise that I've done wrong. I ask you to forgive me. I open the door of my life to you. I ask you to come in. And Lord, I ask you for the courage to follow you, to stand for you. Even if I've on my own, Lord, to read your Bible, to pray. To help me to tell others about you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for me. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks. Once again, for looking in, may the Lord bless you and have a great week. I'll be back, of course, on Monday night for the um, midnight hour, which we have. But OK, hopefully see you next week. And I'm actually thinking of changing the time because now there's opportunities to go to church uh, physically in some places now, which is great. So I'm just trying to think I'll let you know. I'll put it on my timeline about changing the time a little bit it might become a bit earlier. But anyways, uh, well, we'll see if you can manage that. Okay, bye for now.